If you have your Bibles then, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. And we're going to begin reading in verse 15. The Gospel of Luke, chapter number 24, verse 15. The Bible says, And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and, and went with them, but their eyes were holden that they, sh that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And they and the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, Cleopas answered and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and is not known the things which are come to pass that are in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and, and word, before God and all the people, and how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. Besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. And certain women also of our company made us astonished when they were early at the sepulcher and they found not his body. They came saying that they had seen a vision of angels and, and said that he was alive. And certain of them, which, went, uh, which were with us, went to the sepulcher and found it even as the women had said, but they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all the prophets which have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto him, them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went, and he made go as he would not uh, go further, but they constrained him. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for another opportunity to be in your house and to meet with your people uh, this night, Lord. We pray for your help. We pray for your strength. We pray for your guidance. God, help us to understand and know that your word is before us. Lord, as we see uh, preacher after preacher after preacher uh, forsaking your word, Lord, we pray that you would make us steady on that, that we forever cling to the King James Bible, Lord, and for the truth it stands for. Lord, help us not to compromise in the day in which we live, that but we might stand for you. Bless your word according to your mercy and grace. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I want you to take notice of verse 22, and it says, And certain women of our co a company made us astonished when we were early at the sepulcher. Now, I want you to notice, and all of you are very familiar with this, uh, uh, concerning uh, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and the events that led up to this occasion with Jesus. Now, uh, the main thing is this, they didn't know Jesus until he manifested himself to them. Now, that's what the difference between real Baptists and your little stuff that runs around, typically your Southern Baptists, gets little youngins to say some kind of foolish prayer, is they don't know Jesus. In fact, the Bible says here that he had withholding their eyes. See, he still does that today. You know when somebody's going to be saved when them blinders fall off and not before. And uh, we need to understand and know that. And, and instead of being uh, upset about it or to give us a craving to preach the gospel more and more and more. Now, verse 15, back to our, in the beginning of our text, 
The Bible says, and it came to pass while they communed together and reasoned. Now, I want to see the first problem that these gentlemen, Cleopas and whoever was walking with him, the first problem is they were reasoning among themselves. Now, reasoning has two, two different ways it can happen. It can be facts that you read and you try to take some kind of summation out of it, or sometimes reasoning uh, uh, refers to arithmetic and coming out to an exact answer. That's reasoning. Listen, you will never, ever, ever meet the Lord Jesus Christ reasoning among yourself. Because if he don't open your heart like he did Lydia, you can reason all day long and it won't do you a bit of good. And so we find then that these men were approaching spiritual things with their thinker. And we will never, never meet the person of Christ when we're using this. Uh, you know what? This is just corrupt as the rest of us. In fact, sometimes I think mine's more corrupt than this. And, and, and so we find they were approaching spiritual things with something that was very, very carnal. And until uh, the Lord gets us past that, you'll, uh, you'll never see the person of Christ. And so they were reasoning. Jesus himself grew near and went with them, but their eyes were holden. Now, I want you to see that that's under the power of Christ. It's under the power of the Almighty. It's under the power of the Holy Ghost. Your eyes are holden from spiritual things. Now, the person of Christ is what one such thing until he opens our eyes and we're saved out of his goodness and mercy. But I'll give you a call to remember from something else. Remember, I think it was Elisha and Gehazi, uh, or maybe it was Elijah and Elisha. I can't remember which two it was, but it was two, one of those two sets. And, and the enemy was coming against him, just like he does in us today. The enemy was all around him. And, and the prophet prayed and said, Lord, let his eyes be open. And he saw the forces, the spiritual forces with him in the hills and the hollows all around them. And they were greater than the army coming toward them. See, those things still happen. But he holds, he holds our eyes. And all that is under the power of the Almighty. We want to think it's under our thumb, but it's certainly not. And until he opens our eyes to spiritual things, then we'll remain blinded. And so he, they were, he was holding their eyes. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these? that you have one to another as you walk and are sad. Now I want you to point out, I want to point out to you that they were sad. Now the reason I don't believe they were yet converted, I don't think they were yet saved, uh, is they were sad. You know what, if I heard somebody was resurrected, I'd be excited. You know what, I've never seen anybody resurrected. I didn't, I didn't get to see the widow's son rise up to life. I didn't see the little girl raised again like the apostles did. I didn't hear uh, Jesus cry and Lazarus come forth and he coming out bound hand and foot in grave clothes. I never saw all that. And can you imagine how excited you would be? They knew he could do it. Because they didn't saw it three times. At least three times. And instead they had the boo hoos. So uh, in this last day, you know what? I see a lot of the Lord's churches in that boo hoo state, don't you? Uh, you go just as dreary and dry as a piece of last year's firewood, never happy, never glad in the things of the Lord, and going around God. Uh, what well, they don't have any friends anymore. And so I want you to see if the Lord walked with us today and, and holding our eyes and we didn't see him, I think he'd ask us, why are you sad? What's the problem? And, 
And so we see then that this is no uh, generic question, but rather it was a very pointed question. And he wanted to know why. Verse 18. And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering and said unto them, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and is not known the things which are come to pass in these days? Now, uh, I want you to know, and you can see the blindness of Cleopas. He goes, are you a stranger? He didn't recognize him at all. Now, I want you to see that this is not the only time the Lord can change his looks. He can change his vis visage anytime he wants to. But on top of that, have you ever thought, Maybe he looked exactly the same, and he just held their eyes. I, I don't know how he manifested himself on this occasion, but you know what? It's his good pleasure to hold eyes, and it's his good pleasure to open them up. And, and so we find then that uh, Cleopas didn't recognize him. He actually said, are you a stranger? Verse 19, and he said unto them, what thing? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. Now, I want you to see that second element of their blindness. How is he identified? A prophet. Now, a lot of times today, especially with these new agers, a prophet would automatically is sent up. Uh, uh, think of, a, of someone who can see into the future. You know what a prophet, according to that text, is? It's just a preacher. A preacher. That's what I say. He was a preacher. Mighty. You know what? The Lord Jesus was so much more than that, was he not? He was a preacher, yes, but he was sinless. He was the very perfect son of God. He, he, he was sinless for 33 and a half years. He was the living son of God. And all they came down to was a preacher? You know why their eyes were holding? That's it. Their eyes were holding. So the next time you begin to think of the day the Lord saved you, you remember that he took those blinders off and he made you a new creature simply out of his goodness and grace because he certainly didn't know how to. You know what? Sometimes I really get mad. I'm not like Nancy Pelosi at all. But when I can get down to it and I think, whoo, she's got her blinders on and if Christ doesn't intervene, you know what? She's going to split hell wide open. And I should not glory in that at all, right. but rather have compassion on right. her. Amen. Put her before Amen. the Lord. And so we see then really the only difference between people like her and us, by his goodness and grace, he took the blinders off. That, that's the only difference whatsoever. And we get a little upset and maybe even a little self-righteous in the day in which we live. But you remember this. Grace is what you're where you're at even tonight. Verse 20. And how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he that should have redeemed Israel. Now, I want you to see another thing, third thing that they got all wrong. And, they, and the Lord actually instructed them on this. They wanted Israel back as a kingdom. They did not want to be under Roman rule. They did not want to be servants, but they got themselves there in rebellion. But I want you to see the whole ministry of Christ, they missed it time and time again. They wanted a political restoration of Israel and were not concerned about spiritual things. You know what? We live in a day and age today where people don't pray the truth. They want to play truth. If you don't believe that, look around tonight and start counting heads. You know what? I bet a lot of places in Dover, Tennessee, these big, huge church buildings, I bet you can't get uh, a piece of grass between two people. And you know what? They're packed down. 
They're preaching them smooth things. Do you think about it? Does anybody in this town preach Christ that if he don't save you, you're out of luck? You're, 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 you're damned already. No, they preach a little Christ. You can be baptized and be saved. They preach a little Christ. If you'll just say this prayer, everything's going to be okay. They preach everything but the truth. And see, the truth was that Christ came this way to seek and to save that which was lost. His ministry was never, ever to restore Israel. And they just couldn't get it. They just didn't understand it. And, and so we find then that uh, we find the third thing that they stand in ignorance of, and that was political Israel being restored into a nation again. And he says, uh, the rest of verse 21, and besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. And certain women also of our company made us astonished which were early at the sepulcher. Now, why were they astonished? I asked you that. I asked you this, should have they been astonished? And the answer is no. Remember, he told them very clearly, I will be delivered under the, man, uh, the hands of sinful man, and three days and three nights I will sleep, and I will be in the belly of the earth, and on the third day I will rise again. He told them very, very clearly. And you know what? Their eyes were holding. You think how many times you've heard the gospel before the Lord saved your never dying soul? You know why that happened that way? Your eyes were holding. Until he came up. You remember what he says in, in the all the Revelation church letters? He that have ears, let him hear. And you know why? Not everybody has a spiritual ear. My ears have been wacky today. I, I've had my hearing aids on full blast, and I had to ask Sarah to repeat everything she said to me tonight. But you know what? I've got a spiritual ear that works. Mm. Yeah. And the only thing I'd say is by the goodness and grace of God, because you know what? You can't grow a set of spiritual ears. They're given to you of the Lord God Almighty. And so we find as um, these men were going along, they still had, they were predicted of the resurrection, and they still missed it. They still didn't understand. They didn't know what was going on even though they had been directly with Christ. Verse 23, And when they found out the body, they came saying that they had seen, they had also seen a vision of angels which he, which said he was alive. Now, I want you to think back to the resurrection and you remember uh, and the Gospels give uh, different accountings of it and I believe it all goes together to make one issue. But you remember, old Peter stooped down, or maybe it was Andrew, and he saw two men in white apparel in there. And if you remember, uh, Mary and Martha and the other Mary, the angel said unto him, He is not here. Behold, he has risen. And then they were turning around to run and go tell him. And as they were running along on the way, you remember what happened? He says to Mary, uh, that other Mary, not Mary Magdalene, but it's that other Mary, he whispered one word to her, Mary. And she turned around and said, my Lord and my God. See, her ears had been opened up, hadn't they? Went from looking at him in the face and thinking he was the gardener to the point she knew the son of the almighty God. And, and, and so we find then that yes, these men apparently stood in full ignorance even though they had walked with Christ, even though they had been with Christ people, they did not know Christ. And you know what? I've met a lot of people that way. I had a woman one come tell me, uh, <laughs> she don't even remember not being saved. And I thought, well, uh, sister, you may have a big problem there. Yeah. Because, see, I remember how vile I was before the Lord saved me. And you know what? What a glorious, wonderful day that was. I'll never forget it. 
You know what? I'm still praying for that woman because I honestly do not understand that statement. Even under this day, and that's probably been 20 years ago, we need to understand. If you don't know you're saved, you're probably not. That would, that would be my guess. And, and, and so we find then that these men walked around in ignorance even though they were with the very living Son of God in the flesh. And you ask, how could that be? He never manifested himself to them. As all I can say, not until this road you've been made to it made its experience. Uh, verse uh, 25. And then he said unto them, O fools. Now, the Bible tells us never to say that. But he can say it because he's God. That's it. And he said, O fools. Now, what he was, he was looking at, what he was getting at, is you're a spiritual fool. You've never seen the light. You, you know what fool means? It means you're foolish. It means you're unlearned. It means you don't know. It means you don't have any understanding. And he says, you are foolish. You stand in ignorance of who I am. You know what? When, when I get my mind and get my heart set straight, all those people don't feel frustrate me. I feel sorry for them. Because you know what? The Lord God Almighty has manifested himself to me, and they stand in ignorance, and they order me the faults of my prayer every day, and go before him and say, Jesus, have mercy on him. Manifest yourself to him like he did Lydia in the garden. You, you, you save them according to your mercy and grace because they don't know you. That, that ought to be our thoughts. But you know what? Sometimes this old flesh will get in the way and you'll even get mad at them. Yeah. And so we find then, as Lord's people, that one time we all stood just like this. And so the Lord said to them plainly, you're foolish. You're a fool. Notice what else he said. And slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Slow of heart. You know why they were slow? It wasn't important to them. They'd been with him for three and a half years. The very living son of God. And they still didn't know him. They were slow of heart. You know what? If I was facing hell, I'd be fast apart, wouldn't you? And you say, well, and then I have to say, if I had my bonds, I know I would. Because you know, hell would not be a reality. Right. Right. And, and, and so we see then, as the Lord's people, that we could, in fact, spend all these years, all this time, all these events in church, and still be slow apart. Verse 26, Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures and things concerning himself. You know, you think about, I wonder if he said to them, Y'all, think about Daniel. And, and that old king looked in there, and there were four men walking about, and the Bible says this, and one was like unto the Son of God. That's me. And again and again, all through the prophets, uh, it said he started with Moses. Uh, so I did I don't guess he he mentioned uh, uh, the situation that Abraham had and laid the, laid the sacrifice out before uh, the priest. See, that was, a, that was another event that happened all through the Old Testament. He says, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'll be there. And so he, he goes through all these events and, and teaches these people along the way. Verse 28, and they drew nigh unto the village whither they went. And he made as though he would have gone further. 
And they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. Now, I want you to see a change in these people's countenance, a change in their behavior, and, and they, they constrained him. Have you ever been in a service where the Lord was meeting with his people, maybe a song service, maybe some good preaching, and, 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 and you just didn't want it to end? That's constraining you to stay. Lord, stay with us. Don't leave just yet. And they, we want you to spend the night. <laughs> Have you ever been so close to the Lord? <laughs> you just want to say, can't you spend the night with me? Can't you, can't you just uh, uh, be with me all the evening long and into the morning hours? And, and, and they were very interested now. I believe the Lord had opened their hearts and they began, I began, I believe they began to see, but yet their eyes were not opened. They didn't see the full picture just yet. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it. Now, this should have been a real, a real eye-opener because this had happened just four days before. And he broke bread and blessed it. And, and presented to them as the first Lord's Supper. And then the Bible says here, you know what, I believe, I believe that their hearts began to move. Oh, I understand now. And they knew who he was. The Bible says, and their hearts were opened. They began to see. They began to understand. And you know what? If you don't have something like that, you probably don't have anything that's real. Notice what it says. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine Jesus just standing there in a moment's time? Whoosh, he was gone. Mm -hmm. And you know, another time, it says, when the first time he met the whole group, Remember, they was locked up in the house, scared to death, and came through the wall and said, Peace be unto you. Oh, what a time to live in those 40 wonderful days before his ascension back into the Father to see all the things that he done. Remember on, in John's Gospel, and they were out there, and old Peter, halfway mad, I'm going fishing. I'm going back to my other, my other occupation. And... The Lord, uh, the Lord said, uh, cast, cast your nets on the other side. And immediately, well, Peter said, it's the Lord. And you know what? He was ashamed of himself because he was out there butt naked. He right. said so he threw on the coat and jumped in, jumped in the ocean and headed out toward, this, toward, toward the bank. See, God manifests himself in different ways, does he not? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine spending 50, 60, 80 years down below and he never ever manifested in himself to you? <laughs> Have you ever been to those trials and you put it out before the Lord just like the king did when, when trouble was on the way? Hang on, God. He said to your heart, be a good cheer. This is going to be all right. The money's going to be there. The sickness is going to go away. See, that's that. That's what he is able to do, and, and and still able to do even under this day. But half the time we miss it because of our spiritual ignorance. But I want you to see, they understood. Then they said one to another, "Did not our hearts burn within us?" He talked with us on the way. Now, you compare this to your salvation experience, whatever you're trusting, and did your heart burn? See, mine did. And I hope yours did too. Because, see, that's the sign of a living inward man. Been in preaching 
where I, I knew the Almighty was meeting with us. My heart just burned with gladness because he was meeting with us and I was getting something good out of the word of God. Did your heart not burn? See, I really will believe this. I go so far to say, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you probably have been born again. Mm. His heart just burned at the preaching. You know, uh, all across this land today, there are so-called churches that is nothing but more than entertainment centers. And you know what they know nothing about? The heart <coughs> burning, burning within because Christ has met with them. See, we, we need more of that, don't we? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, we, we always quote that and, and, and you know group hug about it, but the Bible says we're two or three together, two or three together together in my name. There will I be in the midst. See, we don't need to be packed out, do we? What we need is the Son of God to come in among us and right. to meet with us, right. and the rest of it will be all right, will right. it not? Yeah. We need to get back to that, do we not? Mm -hmm. That's all I want. That's all I care about. As if when Christ would meet with us, then I, I'm good with the rest of it. Don't need no laser light show. Don't need no uh, big band up here. What we need is the presence of the Holy Ghost. That's sufficient. That's all we need. And so these men were excited and glad. Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us in the way, and while he opened us, opened to us the scripture, and they rose up the same hour. This is the middle of the night, and they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and he appeared at, and have appeared to Simon. And they told the things which were done in the way, and how he was known of them in the breaking of the bread. And as they thus said, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. You know, when he, you think he, he prepared these boys for this situation, did he not? Now when we think about the Lord Jesus out on the Sea of Gennesaret and he, he was asleep there in the bottom of the ship. And they ran to him and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he walked up there and said, Peace be still. Immediately. It was, see, he was preparing them for this. Because see, there was a storm coming a lot better, a lot worse than the one on the Sea of Gennesaret. And that was when everybody would turn against them. A bad storm coming. Oh, Peter, uh, when you stepped out on that boat that night, he was walking toward the Lord. See, that was preparation, too. Uh, you know, Peter was up there, and he says, If it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the sea. And old Jesus, he said, Come. See, he's offering that to us. And that's an experience. Listen, uh, you know what? I don't know if I've got out there or not, do you? Yeah. Now, I love to swim, but when the rain, waves are rolling, it's a different thing, isn't it? The, you know, see, the invitation is there, yeah. but it, it takes a little courage, yes. There, There's not one thing that happens that don't have a God purpose behind it. Not one thing. See, we need to be, uh, we need to be sea walkers, don't we? That's right. We really do. Listen, we live in the day and age of it. I trust the Lord will preserve us in November, but you know what? If he not, if, if, if he doesn't, you know, get ready to walk on the, set, on the troubled sea because honey, it's coming. So, I'm ready. By the grace of God, we'll stick with the stuff. So the next thing, the next time you're walking along and you got the hummy drummies and you think you're all alone, you look out around you and, uh, and see who shows up. I've told y'all this many times. 
My grandmother, we called her nanny, mom's mom. She would never uh, turn a stranger away. And the very reason she wouldn't, she said, well, you never know who it is. <laughs> she, she believed that. Now, uh, and, and you wouldn't think in the 70s there were not that many people walking around that was hungry, but listen, it was. I seen them come up on the porch stinking and dirty, half of them falling out of Adam's holler back there. But you know what? Nanny never turned them away. She'd give them something to eat. She'd say, you sit here on the porch, give them a cold glass of water, and then they go on their way. Have you, have you I wondered often, did she entertain into the Lord? Did she, did she entertain an angel unaware? That's what the Bible says. In fact, the Bible says, ye have entertained angels unaware. And I, sometimes, I, you know, I have to say, well, I, I hope I was nice to them. Because, you know, sometimes I can be a little short with people. And what if I was short and ugly to the wrong one? Mm. Right? Yeah. So as we go along the way, you remember that the Lord God is always right there with us. He's not very far away. When you feel, feel like you've been beat up one side and down the other, he might come up to you and say, what things? <laughs> what things? What things? That's right.